G'day guys, welcome back to Bush Rats. I'm Young Lee in the bush and I'm joined today by my mate, Young Lee in the shed. He's a bit of a quiet fellow. Today we're going to go through uh, a bit of a maintenance video on the old uh, chainsaws. So it's the middle of summer at the moment. We haven't been out wood chopping in a couple months, but it's creeping back up around, coming into winter soon. The saws are looking a little tired, they're looking a little worse for wear. The grubby. They're full of dust, got oil all over them, and they need a bit of a clean up and a spruce up ready for next season. So, between me and Lee in the shed, we're going to clean up a few. I've got the 500 eye here, pulling them apart. We're going to show you a few ways to clean them up, uh, what to look for, and uh, how to get it done, getting things ready to go for next season. So, you're just in the shed, fucking in the car, and you're off. Let's get into it, eh? Alright, so there's not a whole lot you're going to need for this. They're pretty simple machines. Um, one of the main tools you're going to need is either a socket set or a T tool for a chainsaw. Ways of cleaning it, we'll go through that in a minute, but we've got degrees though. We've got some WD 40. Your best friend for this whole job is probably an air compressor. Well, I'll show you a few ways if you don't have an air compressor on how to clean these things up. So, first thing we're going to do is pull it apart. First thing we're pulling off is your bar cover, your clutch cover. Remove the bar and chain. Just like that. As you can see inside, these things get quite clogged up with all sorts of wood chips, wood dust, bar oil, grit, dirt, grime, all sorts of stuff. So, next thing we'll take off is your air filter cover. Same deal in there, that thing is this chock is full. The first thing I'm going to start cleaning up is the old bar. This one's fairly new. Things you want to look for on your bar is if you've got a bluish tinge coming up around the edges, that means the thing has gotten too hot and your um, oil probably isn't oiling enough to cool the thing down. Uh, another thing you want to look for is if the edges are feeling real sharp, which means you've got a bit of a burr on there. Uh, the way to remove a burr, pop the thing in the vise, get yourself a nice file, nice flat one and just cruise along the edges, scrape it sort of back until it's nice and smooth. You can see this one is just gotten a little hot at some point, which is not too bad at all. If your bar's not too bad, so your best bet is probably just get the air compressor out and give it a fucking blow it all out. If you haven't got an air compressor, you can use some of this, even a bit of wire. You just want to go around and just declog all the edges. So take all that gunk out. You also want to check if you've got a roller nose on it, that the thing is spinning pretty good and all your spikes are looking nice and tidy. This one here is looking pretty good. If you haven't got an air compressor or a brush, toothbrush is probably your best bet, give it a good scrape up, get it nice and clean. You may as well while we're here, may as well get it into showroom condition. You've got two little pins here, two little holes, that's for your oiler, so whichever way your bar goes on, some of them you can flip, some have oilers top and bottom, uh, but you just want to make sure that they are unclogged, get oil in there nice and freely. There we go. <laughs> That is your bar, ready to go back on. To go with your bar, obviously you've got a chain. Just want to make sure your chain's looking pretty good. We will do another episode on how to sharpen chains. Uh, if this one here does alright. So if you have a good time on this one, leave a comment. Let us know what you do, look after your saw. Let us know if you've had a blast. Chains, pretty easy, we'll do a little sharpen on them. Now the next thing I like to do is give the whole thing a bit of a clean up. You want to leave your air filter till last because you want to stop any gunk getting in there while you're cleaning it. This is what my uh, clutch cover is looking like at the moment. It's pretty gross. So like I said, air compressor, you just spray that out, get it all nice and clean. If you haven't got one of them, uh, things like heavy duty degrees are pretty good. 
Uh, brake cleaner works pretty well, just make sure you hose it off real good. I like to refrain from using degreaser and brake cleaner on the actual chainsaw. Like maybe, maybe give it a squirt in here, uh, but it wouldn't be just dousing the whole thing, getting it all into the wiring. Um, yeah, the plastics don't seem to like it after a long time as well, but if you haven't got any of them things, good old fashioned brush will do the job. Your T-tool also works really well for getting in there. Scrape out them stubborn bits. On a saw that hasn't been cleaned in a long time, you'll, you'll be here for a little while doing this, so. While I'm chipping away at this, Lee the Shed's gonna give us a quick demonstration on how to clean it down with some degreaser. And how to do it with the old uh, air compressor. <laughs> It's not going to be the cleanest saw in the shed, but that is good enough for government work. Uh, on your clutch cover as well, a few things you want to check are these little nylon plates. Uh, they are to stop the chain from rubbing on the guards, on the metal casings. Uh, these ones here are obviously fairly new because the saw is only about a year old. Uh, these start wearing down, sometimes they pop off, go missing. Uh, so they're definitely a good thing to check up on eBay or down your local steel shop. Clutch cover done. Next up, same deal, all the internals of the actual saw. You want to get in there, same deal with degreaser, works well if you want to go down that route, otherwise air compressor, like I said, air compressor is your best friend on these things. I'm going with me, so I'm going to be scrubbing. Give her a good scrub the whole way around, around all your oil caps, around your starter assembly as well. They get quite tricky, you get wiring in there and all the dust gets all up in there. Like I said, air compressor will do well. Lee in the shed will show you how to air compress this. That is good enough. Right, now that's all nice and clean, you want to start having a look around here. Uh, you got your sprocket here. This one here is a recessed sprocket. You can see all the teeth sit inside of it. Some of them have like a star-like sprocket where the teeth tend to wear out if your chain starts slipping. So you'll, you'll see big grooves. I'll pop a picture of one up now uh, where the grooves are happening. That way your chain starts slipping on there. So you may need a new sprocket, eBay, same deal, or your steel shop. Parts of these are quite expensive, not, not just the 500, but most of your steel saws. Husky too, I assume. Never actually ran a husky, but. Next thing in here, you have a bearing that sits under your sprocket there, which you want to keep lubed up. Don't need to do this too often, but because it's been sitting for quite some time, I'm going to spray it with a bit of WD. Just, you know, I'm not trying to drown it. And that will be plenty. Other than that, in here, maybe you check your plate. Um, sometimes they wear out, so like I said, your chain sits between here and the nylon plate on the clutch cover. Um, look at this one's brand new, she's looking pretty clean and tidy. So that's that section done, on to the next bit. Now that we've finished splat splattering dust and dirt everywhere, we're gonna pull the air filter off. The 500i has a fairly big air filter. Some of them have a smaller one. Um, Quite dirty. Now, same deal, air compressor works really well. You blow out all the grooves in here. Try not to blow it out on the saw, because that way you could be pushing uh, more dirt particles into the actual saw. So if you haven't got an air compressor, your only other option is maybe just to bang it. So you, usually you want to bang it on the sides. You don't want to bang it on the bottom where it's sort of seals, because you don't want to damage that rubber ring on there where it seals onto the uh, chainsaw. So we'll give a bit of a sideways tap. Air filter, it's one of those ones you want to clean out after every session. Just want to make sure the saw's breathing nicely. That one there is looking pretty good, like I said, she's only a year old. Um, I'll probably give it a spray with the old air compressor when I get home, but I haven't got one here. Lee in the shed's going to show us real quick how to just one R with the air compressor. You 
can see there's a few particles kicking around the intake. So just gonna give that a little bit of a clean up without getting any of it in there. It's not too bad. Should we pop this back on? Some people like to put a little thin layer of grease on the rubber seal uh, just to stop anything else getting sucked in. The 500i has a little bit of an issue where this sits too far out of the case, so you put a double ring on them and that just sort of stops it. Sucking in any air, dirt from in here. It's pretty good, we're happy with that. Yeah, if you've got a bit of an older saw, one thing you always want to be checking up on is your spark plugs. Nothing will make a chainsaw start running shit out more than a spark plug. These are a couple of older ones, you can see they're quite filthy. They're pulled out of some other saws. First thing I like to do when I get a new saw, pull the spark plug out. If it's looking any worse than that, I'll just chuck a brand new one in because they just they run heaps better. It's heaps easier to diagnose any problems. Thinking about doing an episode coming up soon on how to diagnose a chainsaw that's not running. We'll go through the spark plugs and everything you might need if you've got a saw there that doesn't run on what to look for and how to get the thing running. So if you're interested in that, drop a comment down here. But yes, spark plugs, you need them for a chainsaw to run well. All right, friends, we're coming close to the end of this. Nearly time to put it all back together. Uh, one other thing you might want to check for as well on an older saw, uh, inside your fuel tank, you pop the cap off, look inside there, there is a little fuel filter on a line, obviously the pickup line. Laying the shadow shells, what one of them looks like right now. It's worth digging them out, checking them out, making sure they're not clogged up with um, dirt and dust and all sorts, because obviously that'll affect your fuel flow. Uh, some of the older ones as well have a fuel tank breather line. It's just a little hose that comes out of the fuel tank. They've got a little um, one-way filter valve sort of thing. Stops fuel coming up, lets a little bit of air in. They start running pretty shit if they're um, clogged up or missing. So check up on your fuel lines. Uh, everything else is looking pretty good. Another couple of things on the older saws again in particular. You might want to pull the muffler off, they have a spark arrestor. It's like a little uh, piece of mesh to stop sparks shooting out, but they can get clogged up with shit and it'll um, just sort of stop breathing well as well. So there are a couple other little things that you might want to check up on. But other than that, we're going to pop this thing back together. And make sure she starts. A little trick when tightening up your bar and chain there, guys. Always make sure the nose is in the up position. See, it's got a little bit of movement there, up and down. You want it to be in that up position. So I just hold the handle, pop it on the, on the ground, and just do your last couple nips with it. Just like that. Ready to be put back in the shed for another season. Oop. Now she's ready. We'll just give it a quick fire up. I don't want the range of thinking I'm chopping any wood, but we'll just, we'll just fire her up. Uh, another couple things you might want to do is you might want to drain all the fuel out of them. Um, I like to run them pretty empty on the last cut as well. Uh, so you can drain the fuel if you don't want any stale fuel in there. But make sure this bad girl starts up. One last thing you might want to do as well next time you go wood chopping, always make sure your oiler is working pretty well. So some of them in the very bottom here have an oil adjustment of high and low. I like to run mine pretty high. But the way to sort of test it, it's a bit of a trick run, but you, you fire her up, you get the tip of your nose up close towards a log. Obviously don't touch the log. Just give her some curry and just make sure there's oil spitting out of there. So you don't want to be running your chainsaw if it's not spitting any oil. That's a quick way to fuck up your chains and bars. Start turning them blue, getting burrs on the edges. And the old bars are not as cheap as they look, you know? Something like that's about 80 bucks or something without a chain. All right, all packed up. Thanks for coming along on the ride for this one, guys. It's been a bit of fun. Uh, a bit of a chainsaw maintenance video. This will keep the old girl ready and running for next season. Just gonna go in the shed, pick her up, fill her up with fuel and she's good to go. Special thanks to Lee in the shed for helping us out on this one. Lee, say goodbye to the people. He's a man of few words. 
Uh, like and subscribe if you've had fun guys. I'd like to be doing some more chainsaw maintenance videos, how to fix them. No expert, but I do enjoy doing them. So if you had a, if you had fun, leave a comment below. It's been a time. Let us know what chainsaw you're running. If I've missed anything that you do on your saws for maintenance, getting them ready for next season, let us know. Um, other than that, we'll see you guys out on the tracks maybe next week. A bit of fishing, a bit of camping. Looking forward to wood season. Take it easy. Playing cards and crap games, not looking for the score. And if I ever get back home again, I'll never own no Find yourself a country girl, why don't you